Good morning. It's good to see so many people here. It makes me glad that camp is over, even though I like camp. But like I said, it is good to have everyone here this morning. There's an Mild. Christ. Two words that I, I don't think really work well together. You see, Christianity is not helped by, by flowery, soft images of Christ. Because you cannot sanitize the Savior and you cannot sanitize the cross. It does not work. And so much of culture today, so many um, famous paintings and images of Christ have, have almost, you remember the glamour shots, filters, where it makes it super soft and a little bit blurry, so everything just looks, looks nice and peaceful and gentle and easy. In a lot of ways, that seems to be how Christ has often been presented throughout history through this, through this glamour shots filter that takes out any, any sort of passion or hardship. And I don't believe that people are trying to insult Jesus by calling him mild. But at the same time, it is wholly incorrect and indeed harmful to our thinking. Mild, the man who flipped tables and challenged leaders and walked towards death. Mild, the man whose personality 2,000 years later is not diminished in the slightest. Whose power has not waned at all. In the Gospels, we see Jesus flipping the tables in the temple at least twice. <coughs> He goes to the Pharisees. He's constantly challenging them, challenging the, the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees and calling them out on what they're doing. This is a man who is seen as a threat, a moral threat to the leader's way of life. And yet so often we imagine and picture him as Mild. Now he was certainly meek in the true sense of power being under control. But not in the sense of being a, a frail, quiet wallflower who what was never offensive to anyone, never stepped on anyone's toes. It just, just walked on eggshells wherever he went so that no one got angry at what he was saying. It's not what we see. He was certainly not mild. He did not lack in personality. I don't believe that Jesus had difficulty making an impression on people. I thought about Googling some, just Googling Jesus Christ and seeing what pictures popped up. And if you do, a lot of the images are this, this little soft shot where he's... With a meek and a mild Christ who is never going to put forth his authority, why would someone not find their hero elsewhere? This image of a soft, mushy, Sickly sweet wallflower saying soft words on paper. Why would you not go elsewhere? Imagine, if you will, Jesus saying in Matthew 23, starting in verse, in verse 13, But woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, 
uh, 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 hypocrites. Guys, you, you uh, shut up the kingdom of heaven against men and you neither go in yourselves nor do you allow those who are going to enter in. And, and that's, that's a problem. For you, you know, you, you, you devour widows' houses and for a pretense, you're, you're making these long prayers. Therefore, you know, you, therefore, um, I don't want to offend you, but you know, you, you're going to receive greater condemnation. It's not how you read it, is it? No. <clears throat> Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for you neither go in yourselves, nor do you allow those who are entering to go in. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayers. Therefore you will, you will receive greater condemnation. Sounds more likely, right? We just read in our scripture reading today that Jesus is the image of the invisible God. He is God in human form. And so what we see Jesus say, what we see Jesus do, how we see him behave and act and react is an image of God on earth. And the problem with the meek and mild Jesus is that it becomes a caricature. It exaggerates his sentimentality. It exaggerates his compassion at the expense of all his other qualities. So you see where the problem is, right? You've ever had a caricature done or seen one done? They, you know, they'll take one feature and make it prominent and kind of build the rest of the image around that. <clears throat> but it does not give the full story. It does not give an accurate representation. I mean, can, can a mature adult worship and follow a, a pushover kind of God? Now, God is love. But how we, and so how we view God is going to build our foundation for what love is. And if love is this, this sweet, always nice, always gentle, never stepping on toes, never being offensive, never doing anything that's ever going to make anyone uncomfortable, we're going to have a problem with how we're showing love to people because love is more than always saying kind words and soft phrases. Love is a thing of truth, regardless of the difficulty of that truth. Love is a thing of helping and guiding whether that means doing so painfully or whether doing so gently. <clears throat> Love is both blade and bandage. It is both safe space and a revealing mirror. And we cannot withhold the more difficult aspects of love without hurting those who we claim to love. If I claim to love you and I never tell you the truth, I never bring the hard things before you to help you and to fix you and to help you move through the difficulties in life, well, I can say I love you all, all I want, but my actions aren't showing that. <clears throat> See, to view Jesus as mild, 
poses a great threat to our Christian walk if we're not careful. Because it will affect how we love people, it will affect how we treat people, it will affect how we deal with situations when they come up. And if we're always going to walk on eggshells and never make anyone uncomfortable, we're going to end up with bigger problems. <laughs> Furthermore, in 2 Corinthians 3, verse 18, we read, But we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. We are becoming more like Christ. We know from elsewhere, elsewhere in Scripture that we are to look like Christ, to be like Him. And if this is our image of it, we're not going to look like He truly is. Just a few chapters over in chapter 10. Starting in verse 1. Now I, Paul, myself, am pleading with you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ. So, meekness and gentleness of Christ. This is what we're talking about, right? But notice what he says. Who in, the pres who in presence am lowly towards you, but being absent and bold towards you. But I beg you that when I am present, I may not be bold with that confidence by which I intend to be bold against some who think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God. For pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bringing every thought into captivity to, to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. This is what he says in the meekness and gentleness of Christ. That we fight and wage spiritual war against every high thing that exalts itself against God. And if we must be bold in confronting people when it's time, then we be bold. And if we can, then we come gently. But there is a time for both. In Ephesians chapter 6, we all know the passage about the armor of God and how we have the shield of faith and the sword of the Spirit. Do you wield a sword mildly? Do you wield a sword gently? I have my sword. I just have to pretend it's here. And if I, if I see evil, if I have evil coming at me, and I sit here, I go, uh, no evil. No, no, stay away, please. That's, that's bad, no. Just stay away. I'm going to fight you. So just don't, don't come near me because I'm dangerous. <laughs> really? <clears throat> My dog weighs 10 pounds. It is this big. It is more dangerous than that person. <sighs> Understand that Satan wants to devour us. And he will go after the weakest of us first. He will go after those of us who are in trouble. And the faith and the way of Christ is not something that we can be mild about and do. We must be powerful. We must be strong. We must be resolute. Just as Jesus Christ always has and always will be. Because we are at war. In this church, in this building, with these people, evil ways wages war on you. And if it can take out a family, 
then it's gotten a group. And if it can use other Christians to do it, well, then all the better. If he can pit us against each other, if he can use us against each other, if he can give us an image of a, of a Jesus Christ, the Lord Messiah, the creator of all things, who is powerless, he's already got a very large leg up. <clears throat> all things hold together through him. Nothing was made that was made. In the book of Revelation, we see that we see a, John sees a vision of Jesus. And he's not sitting between a couple of flowers just nicely smiling. He has eyes of fire. A sword coming from his mouth. He comes in strength and power. Power beyond belief. Power beyond understanding. John can't even understand it. We do, not, do not, we do not serve a powerless Savior. We serve a Savior in the fullness of His strength, the fullness of His power. And we need to understand that He can help us because He has the power to. And unless we realize that, we are not going to rely on Him for that strength. Those who have been baptized into Christ have been given his Holy Spirit to live in us. That is not a spirit of weakness. It is not a spirit of mildness. It is a, it is a spirit of power. Power to overcome the enemy. Power to make things right. Power to come before him. Power to be his child. It is power. We need to be ready and able to rely on that power. Because otherwise, we will be shredded and eaten. If you have not become his, then the time comes now. To take hold of that for which Christ Jesus has taken hold of us. To be buried in his blood. To be raised a new creature. Not a creature of weakness, but a creature of strength. Be made more and more like him as each day goes by. And if we've been caught in that weakness, if we've been shredded already, then perhaps it is time to come to him. Perhaps it is time to confess. Perhaps it is time to realize that he has the power to restore. But we have to trust him and come to him first. So if we can help you do that, won't you let us know as we stand and as we sing.